ओमज्ञानदिराजनछलाकया चक्षुरोन्मलिता तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा सुखदाक वंदेह श्रीगुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्रीप सागर जात सह गणा रघुनाथात तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पर्जना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधाकृष्णपादिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्ते सप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुस्ते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय पंचकलपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतरेशमितरभनाथ नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतरेशमित स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी चारणे विशेष मुखम कुर्दिवाचल गिरी यत्पाद वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर हरिओं तत्स हरे कृष्ण थिंक डिवोटीज आर स्टिल जॉइनिंग so just a quick recap of where we are uh the intention today is to start our discussion on the ninth chapter of the bhagavad gita raja vidya is the title of this particular chapter the king of knowledge this not this particular chapter is very very special and why it is special we will shortly discuss so in the eighth chapter krishna explained about how one can attain the transcendental realm by fixing one's consciousness on the supreme at the time of death and the lord had mentioned of course the focus was mainly on the discussion of the process of yoga mishra bhakti or the process of yoga uh which is mixed with bhakti rada the other way around bhakti mishra yoga process the yoga is the predominant process and bhakti is added on top of it of how the yogi follow certain mechanical processes controlling the life breath controlling the senses raising the life airs upwards using the shat chakra yoga and how at the last moment suspending all other thoughts being absorbed exclusively in the in the contemplation of the transcendental having uttered the syllable om and remembering the lord one departs from this world and can attain the supreme destination but krishna also mentions that even in such a scenario it is important to consider another aspect determine whether one will go to the spiritual world or one will come back which is the time of departure so he explains the journeys the journey that under what circumstances the brahman realized soul the one who has realized transcendence he transcends material nature and attains the transcendental realm and in which circumstances under what influences under what time 
if he departs, he goes to the higher planets and comes down. And the Lord hinted towards the end of this particular discussion by saying that those who are ananya devotees of mine, exclusive devotees of mine, they don't have to be bothered about these two paths. They are never bewildered. They are not confused. They don't have to mark on their calendar the slots in which they can possibly leave and try to somehow juggle. Because for them, the Lord has taken it upon himself to pick them up from the material world and take them to the spiritual world. Tesham aham samuddharta mrityu samsar vartmani bhavami na acherat partha maya veshita chetas. The those whose minds are continuously fixed on me without deviation, maya veshita chetasam. And this is possible only through love. Even if the yogi sits down for meditation, it's not possible to meditate all of one's waking hours. Only possible in the state of love that one can actually be fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. And all these pure devotees, the gopis, even devotees like Arjuna, that was their character that they were always absorbed in remembering Krishna. And there is a story mentioned about Arjuna that Arjuna was so absorbed that once somebody asked, I do not remember who that character was, who that personality was, they asked, oh, but Arjuna may be remembering Krishna when he is waking, but what when he is asleep? At least at that time he must be forgetting Krishna. Somebody recommended that particular person to go near Arjuna when he was sleeping. And when he went near Arjuna as he was sleeping, he could hear Arjuna's breath. Typically, right, when somebody is sleeping, when we go near them, we can hear them breathe. Maybe for some of us, it may be snoring also. Not particularly pleasant. And then some of us with our mouths open. So not a pleasant sight. But Arjuna looked so effigent, looked so divine. And as he was breathing, in the sound of his breath, this particular personality would hear the name of Krishna. Krishna, 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 Krishna. So that is possible only in intense love, spiritual love, not even in material love. That is the status. And for such people, Krishna takes it upon himself. And this is seen repeatedly within the pastimes of the Mahabharata also. If you see in the Mahabharata, more than Arjuna being worried about his own victory, Krishna was more concerned. Because Krishna already had told Arjuna to declare it. Arjuna, partha pratijani hi namai bhakta pranashati. Arjuna, please declare it boldly, my devotee never perishes. So Arjuna declared it. <laughs> so now it became Krishna's problem. There is this beautiful pastime of how during the time of Mahabharata war, at one time, Arjuna, and I don't want to go into the details of all the background stories, but at one point, when Abhimanyu was killed and Arjuna wanted to take revenge on Jayadrath, he had taken the vow that if Jayadrath is not, I will kill Jayadrath until sunset tomorrow. And if I don't kill him, then I will enter fire and end my life. So all the Kauravas became so happy when Arjuna took this vow. Because they knew that this is all we have to do because Arjuna was the main warrior on the side of the Pandavas. And they all decided that all we have to do is for this next one day, just protect Jayadrath. All the Kuru warriors, exclusively one duty only, protect Jayadrath. Because that is our Passed to victory. So they were very happy 
And on the Pandava side, Krishna, when he heard this vow of Arjun, he hit his hand on his head. He said, wasn't it already difficult enough? Why you are so excited to take such vows? So Arjun said, sorry Krishna, but I have already taken now. What to do? So that night, it is said that Arjuna was in his camp peacefully sleeping. Yeah. Waiting for the next day's battle. But it is said, Lord Krishna in his camp was within, within the battlefield. They all had their camps where they would rest at night. Yeah. Lord Krishna apparently couldn't sleep. So this is the Lord's pastime to show. And the Lord was walking to and fro in his own sleeping chambers. Yeah. Apparently in great anxiety. What was his anxiety? How do I solve the problem of Arjuna's vow? Arjuna is sleeping peacefully. Arjuna has taken the vow that if I don't kill Jayadharad, I will enter fire. But Arjuna is sleeping peacefully. Why? Because Arjuna knows Krishna is thinking over time of how to save him and how to protect him. So I don't want to go into the details of that pastime. But the point was that Krishna was planning. Plan A, if plan A fails, plan B. If plan B fails, plan C. Correct? This is how strategies are planned in battle. I'll do, I'll, we'll do this, we'll do that. We may think why Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead has to plan plan A, plan B, plan C. The thing is, the Lord doesn't intervene with the free will of the living entities. And the Lord decided at that particular point that if all other plans fail, then before sunset, and if sunset happens, and if Arjuna enters fire and he dies, if it comes to that, then I will personally, in the middle of the battle, call all my weapons and my chakra and my all my divine weapons. And within a few moments, I will personally destroy all the Kurus. Because I cannot tolerate that Arjuna will be killed or will commit suicide. So after Krishna took this vow and decided oh, that this is what he will do, then the Lord went to take a rest. Of course, we know eventually how the Lord intervened. How he, with his Sudarshan Chakra, he covered the sun and it appeared that sunset had happened and all the Kurus laid down their guard and Jayadrat came out dancing, waiting to see Arjuna enter fire. When he came out, Krishna withdrew the Sudarshan Chakra and told Arjuna, here is the sun, here is Jayadrat, here is your bow. Do the needful. And Jayadrat was killed. So the point of this pastime is that the Lord takes it upon himself to protect his devotees. So that's why the devotees of the Lord do not have to be in too much anxiety about their own deliverance. They only have one task which they have to do. Ananyas chintayanto maam ye Engage in Ananya Bhakti. So if you want God to become your... Now, of course, the devotee never thinks that he wants to burden the Lord like that. But the Lord, for the Lord, it's a, it's a burden of love. It's not a burden of headache. It was not that Krishna was thinking, oh, you know, why I took this vow? Now you know, I have to solve Arjuna's problem. No. Just like a parent is affectionate for his child, similarly, the Lord was feeling so affectionate towards Arjun. And for that matter, for any pure devotee. And that is why throughout the pastimes of the Pandavas, the Lord repeatedly, on some pretext or the other, would spend time with the Pandavas because the Pandavas are going through so many challenges in life. And the Pandavas and Mother Kunti were so happy that they were getting repeatedly Krishna's association to such a point that after the entire battle of Kurukshetra was over and Yudhishthir was installed as the king, and after everything was settled, when Lord Krishna was saying bye-bye, the first canto, 
to go back to Dwarka and he came to see Mother Kunti, seek her permission. She's his aunt. Go back to Dwarka. At that time, Kunti, she's offering very beautiful prayers. I think it's the eighth chapter, if I'm not wrong, the first one. Prayers of Queen Kunti. And one of the beautiful prayers that she, she mentions in that chapter is Vipada Santu Tatshashvat Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru Bhavata Darshanam Yatshyat Apunar Bhava Darshan. Krishna, it is so sad that now that all problems have been fixed, you are going away. But when there were so many problems in our life, you would always be with us. So my prayer to you, Krishna, is let there continuously be problems in our life. Because when there are problems, you will be there. When you will be there, we will be remembering you and taking your association. And remembering you means freedom from the cycle of birth and death. Apunar Bhava Darshanam. Bhavata Darshanam Yat Syat Apunar Bhava Darshanam. So this is a very beautiful, very lofty prayer. Of course, only great devotees like Kunti can pray like that. Only those who have the strength to withstand that blessing should pray like that. So, word of caution. Don't get over excited and then pray to Krishna. Krishna, give me problems so I can remember you. Our problem is even when everything is okay, we cannot remember him. When we become overwhelmed with problems, we will start blaming the Lord. Oh, you are like this. See, I did so much, but you did like this. So on us, it may probably have a counter productive result. But the point is again that how much the Lord is affectionate to his devotees. He never left the Pandavas or Kunti alone. He was always there. Even when Draupadi was in distress and nobody else could save her, the Lord personally appeared and gave her the sari to protect her chastity and honor. And this is just one pastime. It is true for all great and pure devotees. So the point we are trying to make is Krishna assures at the end of the 8th chapter that deliverance of the Ananya Bhakta. Now this particular special offer of the Lord's exclusive protection, a full cover of insurance policy. It's called full coverage. Full coverage means it doesn't matter what happens. No matter, you know, what the situation is, what happens at the, you know, it's all covered. Correct? Sometimes it's a comprehensive insurance, we call it comprehensive insurance coverage. Whether your car hits somebody's car or their car hits you or you forget the keys in the car and somebody steals it. Whether it is theft, it is fire, whether it's your negligence, somebody else's negligence, no matter what. Because you have paid the requisite premium under the policy of full comprehensive coverage. The company is obliged to give you full coverage no matter what happens. So Ananya Bhakti is Krishna's full comprehensive coverage. Of course, Krishna's protection is available to all living entities. Even those who worship him with material motivation. But this full comprehensive coverage is available only for Ananya Chintayantoma. So Krishna at the end of the 8th chapter tells Arjuna that for the Ananyas, they are never bewildered because for them, they are always connected to him. So the premium to be paid for this kind of a protection, this kind of an affectionate shelter from the Lord and all encompassing protection from the Lord. is exclusively remembering him without any material motivation. There is no consideration either of material benefit or even of moksha or of any yogic siddhis either. No bhukti, no mukti, no siddhi. Bhukti, mukti, siddhi, kami. Sakale Ashanta Krishna Bhakta Nishkama Ata Eva Shanta. 
So that Ananya Bhakta was glorified by the Lord as one who doesn't have to worry because he is fully taken care of. So having said that now, Krishna in the ninth chapter wants to expand on this exclusive Ananya Bhakti because he has spoken about Bhakti. He has hinted about Bhakti. He has spoken a bit in 7th chapter. He has spoken a bit about it in the 8th chapter. But he hasn't gone into more deeper understanding of Ananya Bhakti. So in this chapter, Raja Vidya, that's what Krishna is going to do. He labels this chapter as the king of knowledge. And Raja Guya. Rajguya means the topmost secret of all secrets. So that is the first verse of this particular chapter. Uh, sorry, second verse of this particular chapter. So why this chapter is known as Raja Vidya or the topmost knowledge is because the Acharya has explained that the initial part of the Bhagavad Gita, especially the first six chapters, are focused on confidential knowledge. What is that confidential knowledge? That you are not the body, you are the Atma, the spirit soul. That is also secret knowledge. But as one goes higher beyond the sixth chapter, as one comes into seventh chapter and eighth chapter, Krishna reveals knowledge about bhakti. First six chapters, if you see, there's not much discussion of bhakti. There is discussion of the nature of the soul. And there's a discussion of how to be free from karma through karma yoga and jnana yoga. And a bit of ashtanga yoga is also described. And towards the end of the sixth chapter, there's a hint that the topmost yogi is a bhakta. And then bhakti discussion begins with seventh and eighth chapter in a general sense. That is why 7th and 8th chapters are said to be more confidential knowledge. Because the knowledge is now going deeper, not just about the self, but about the super self and the relationship of the self with the Supreme Self. But that bhakti which is being discussed in 7th and 8th chapter is still not ananya bhakti. So, Knowledge of the self is guhya or secret. The knowledge of bhakti is guhya tara. More secret. But knowledge of ananya bhakti is guhya tama. Topmost secret. So the knowledge which is given in the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita is said to be the topmost knowledge. And if you think about it, interestingly, within the 18 chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the ninth chapter sits in the middle. In fact, the ninth and the 10 chapters together are said to comprise the heart of the Bhagavad Gita because they focus on the topic of Ananya Bhakti. It begins with the ninth chapter and Krishna discusses a bit in the 10th chapter as well especially in verses 10.8 to 10.11. It describes beautifully the nature of the pure devotees. Machitta madagata prana bodhanta parasparam tathantas chamam nityam tushanti charavantya desha meva nukampardam aham adhyana jamta mahana shyam yat mohavas jnana deepena basa So many beautiful verses are describing it in the 10th chapter as well. But Krishna begins that discussion in the ninth chapter by saying, by telling Arjuna, now I am going to tell you the topmost knowledge. So if God is saying this is topmost, that means this is topmost. It's not that, oh, I forgot, you know. There's one more thing I forgot to tell you. No, God doesn't. God is achyuta. He doesn't make mistakes. So the Lord says in the first verse of the ninth chapter itself, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Idam Tute Gujyatamam Pravakshami Anasuyave Nyanam Vidnyana Sahitam 
यद्यात्वा मोक्ष से शुभात ओ अर्जुन नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू द मोस्ट कॉन्फिडेंशियल कॉन्फिडेंशियल इन वेरी सिंपल वर्ड मीन सीक्रेट द मोस्ट सीक्रेट नॉलेज एंड इट्स रियलाइजेशन द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ इट देर इज ज्ञान एंड देर इज विज्ञान not only i am going to give you knowledge but i am going to describe to you the realization and experience of that knowledge gnanam vidnyana sahitam vid gnana v stands for vishesha gnana means theoretical understanding but when that knowledge becomes realized yes just like somebody who has never eaten a mango so for him knowledge is mango is sweet so if somebody asks him do you know whether what is the taste of mango he says yes i have gnana mango is sweet but when he actually eats mango especially especially an alfonso mango then one can actually taste the mango and get a realization of the theoretical knowledge that the person had the gnana becomes vishesha gnana vijnana it becomes realized knowledge so that when one speaks one doesn't speak simply theoretically but with the conviction of the experience of the realization of that knowledge so krishna is not just going to give theoretical knowledge but krishna says i am also going to give you information about the experience what that knowledge practically means in the lives of devotees how they behave what is their thinking in that terms i am going to explain to you and when you understand this topmost knowledge arjuna you will become free from all material inauspicious things from all miseries moksha se ashubha yad gyatva having known which so the point is listen very carefully that's what krishna is telling arjun now i'm telling you the topmost secret yeah. so sometimes when friends are talking and you want to tell something very special so you want to make sure that the person is full attention i'm telling you now something really really important please listen nobody knows this this is top secret yeah. so this is krishna whispering to arjuna saying this is top secret so let's hear what is that top most secret so one thing krishna emphasizes in this verse to arjuna is arjuna why i am telling this top most secret to you krishna tells because anasuyave you are not envious of me and that is why you are fit to receive this knowledge what does this mean it means that those who are envious of the lord do not take to the process of devotional service or even if they take they only add devotional service as one of the ingredients in the recipe of their spiritual practices because they know that some grace from the lord is needed for them to attain their desired goals otherwise it will become very difficult correct just like in a job sometimes you don't like the boss but you still have to be nice and you know reach out to him and make him happy in a special way because you know that the fruits that you are going to get are dependent on him so that kind of bhakti even though it's bhakti it's still appreciated by the lord but that is not considered the topmost bhakti that is not ananya because the attraction in that bhakti is not for the lord himself exclusively but rather what the lord can give you so what is ananya ananya means not something else where you love krishna not for what he can give you but just because krishna is so lovable krishna is so wonderful krishna is so beautiful 
Krishna is so kind. Just see how beautiful his threefold bending form is. How beautiful his smile is. I don't want anything. I just want to see him. I just want to hear about him. I just want to chant his name. I just want to serve him. That is Ananya Bhakti. So that knowledge, which is about Ananya Bhakti, you cannot give to somebody who is envious. Because he will be immediately repelled. And he will immediately become offensive to the Lord. That's why the topmost knowledge is to be explained only to the devotees. And that is why even at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, if you recollect, for those who have studied Bhagavad Gita earlier, Krishna especially mentions the same point again. That he who explains the supreme secret to my devotees, my devotees means those who are not envious of me, for him, your devotional service is guaranteed and I consider him as doing the topmost seva for me. idam paramam guhyam mad bhakte shobhidasyati bhakti mai param kritva mame vaishyatiya samshe. So the knowledge of Ananya Bhakti is for those who are not envious and simultaneously we have to understand that as long as we are envious of the Lord, we cannot enter into the realm of Ananya Bhakti. What does this envy mean? Envy means why should I surrender to God? Why God should be the beneficiary of everything? Why Krishna? Oh, we, oh I wish I was Krishna. So when the Jiva has this kind of a mentality, when rather than being attracted towards the Lord because of the Lord's unlimited opulences, the living entity becomes envious of him, then it becomes very difficult to develop pure devotional service. So Krishna is now going to give that knowledge of him. Idam jnanam. And pure devotional service, we have discussed this already, essentially is the ninth processes of bhakti. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Marchanam, Mandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Matmani, Vedanam. Even when Paralad Maharaj was asked by Hiranyakashipu, what is the topmost thing you have learnt in school? The king of knowledge. You have learnt so many things. What is the best thing that you liked and what do you think is the topmost education? Prahlad Maharaj gave the same answer like what Krishna is giving in the Bhagavad Gita. He says, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Pada Sevanam Archanam Mandanam Dasyam Sakyam Matmani Vedanam You see the scriptures are and the realized souls very consistent. They are not saying different, 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 different things. The topmost secret is Ananya Bhakti. Where one simply loves to hear about Krishna. Simply loves to speak about his glories. Kirtanam. Simply loves to remember and contemplate on his beautiful form, pastimes, qualities. Smaranam. Mandanam offer beautiful heartfelt prayers. Of course, these prayers are not prayers of Give me this, give me this, not that, those kind of prayers. It is not yachana. It is prayers offering glorification, prayers of surrender, prayers of gratitude, prayers of repentance, begging forgiveness, begging for mercy, vandanam, and so on and so forth. So through these processes of pure devotional service, the heart becomes completely cleansed and that jnana eventually is converted into vidnana because one realizes one's constitutional position that one is eternally a part and parcel of the Lord. So seventh chapter, the Lord gave knowledge the knowledge of what was given in the seventh chapter can be realized through the process of Ananya Bhakti in full. Because that's what Krishna said. I am giving you the knowledge 
having understood which nothing else remains to be known. Na avashishyate, nothing else remains. So Krishna is in the ninth chapter now giving the process by which the complete realization of that knowledge is possible. Jnanam vidnyana sahitam yad gyatva moksha ashubhati. So this is the very, very, very deep part of the scriptures. So 9.2, one of the most famous verses of the Bhagavad Gita. Raja Vidya Raja Guyam Avitram Midam Uttamam Pratyakshavagamam Dharmyam Susukam Kartum Avyayam. This particular verse is actually a collection of eight adjectives describing this topmost knowledge of Ananya Bhakti. Of what Krishna is about to reveal in this chapter and continuing with the following chapter, chapter 10. This is Raja Vidya. This is the king of knowledge. It's the PhD subject matter. Ananya Bhakti is PhD. Because that knowledge will give you complete realization of the self. If you remember at the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavat, where the pastime of how the Bhagavatam came about to be created, if you recollect, Vyasadev, even after compiling the Vedic scriptures and describing all other processes, the processes of various fruitive activities, various austerities, dan, yadnya, tapaha, describing karma yoga, jnana yoga, ashtanga yoga, to some extent bhakti yoga, but mishra bhakti yoga, even after that, he was not feeling completely satisfied and he asked his spiritual master, why am I not feeling completely satisfied? And he told him, Ananya Bhakti, you have not focused on. Exclusive glorification of the Lord. So write the Bhagavat. Write about the Bhakti which is exclusively aimed at pleasing the Lord. which is not covered by karma and jnana. Jnana karmadi anavrittam anukulena krishna anushilenam Serving the Lord in such a way that the Lord is pleased for His pleasure, not because you want something from Him. That is that ananya uttama transcendental bhakti. And if you recollect, we are discussing the same concept in the 29th chapter of the third canto of the Bhagavad. Same thing is being explained by Kapila to Mother Devahuti. There is bhakti in goodness, bhakti in passion, bhakti in ignorance. But what is the desirable bhakti is the nirguna uttama bhakti, which is essentially ananya bhakti. And that Krishna is saying is the king of education and raja yam. The most secret of all secrets. Now, this is a very interesting point. When I first read this verse, probably 30, uh, 30 odd years ago, I was thinking, how can this be the topmost secret? So this is the Bhagavad Gita. It is known everywhere. Everyone can read this verse. It's openly available. Right? Normally when information is confidential, when the government keeps classified files, classified information, nobody has access to that information. So how is this secret? This is secret because even though it is a published verse, one cannot actually understand or penetrate into the mysteries of this verse unless one receives the blessings of the Lord and His pure representatives. That is the secret. Pavitram idam uttamam. Pavitra, this knowledge is extremely pure. Idam uttamam. Uttamam means transcendental. This is not mixed with tamogun, rajogun or even sattvagun. This is uttama. The word uttama means uttama, beyond darkness, which means beyond the modes of material nature. 
This is pure and transcendental. This is ananya and this is pratyakshavagamam. You can realize and experience this knowledge for yourself. You can experience your soul and your beautiful relationship with the Supreme Lord. Because that is the topmost secret. The beginning of the secret is that you are a soul. A little bit higher when you go, you understand you are part and parcel of the Supreme. But when you get full knowledge of your real identity, you also understand that each of us has a personal relationship with the Supreme Lord in the spiritual world. That swarup of the soul, that innermost nature of the soul becomes revealed <coughs> and can directly be experienced. Pratyaksha avagamam. It's not that you simply read and you believe it. Krishna is emphasizing here that this knowledge is not just about believing what I say. Krishna is telling him, if you follow this process that I'm giving you, you can realize and experience this knowledge. The Vedic philosophy is not a point of believe now and after you die, then you will get to see what we have spoken about. The Vedic approach is, if you follow the process, you can realize in this life, in this body, you can actually have the experience of that realization. And this knowledge is also dharmyam. This is the essence of religion. This is the very principle of dharma because it is the dharma of the self. And it is su sukham kartum. So after having said this is the topmost secret, this is the best, this is the best, people may think that this is extremely difficult to perform. But quite to the contrary, Krishna is telling Arjuna, because this knowledge is the very dharma of the soul, it is the very nature of the soul, actually it can be performed very naturally by the living entity. And it is actually pleasurable to perform. Bhakti is pleasurable to perform. Why? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada, Sevanam. Is it difficult to sing, to dance, to eat prasad, to see the beautiful deity of the Lord, to sing beautiful prayers? No. It is so enjoyable. The process itself is so enjoyable. For whom does this enjoyable process actually become painful? For whom does it actually become painful? This process only becomes painful for those who are envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's why Krishna told in the very beginning, first verse, don't tell this to those who are envious. Because if you tell them this is Susukam Kardun, they'll say, no, it is so painful to glorify Krishna and chant his name. Why? Because they just cannot tolerate some people become so upset when they hear, read Bhagavad Gita. Why is Krishna glorifying himself? He's saying, I am this, I am that, I am this. He should not glorify, he should become humble. No, no, no. God doesn't need to become humble because God is already truly possessing all opulences. He's, God is simply stating the reality of his nature. When we say, I am great, we are actually in illusion. That is why we need humility. So please do not try to preach humility to God. God, in spite of having all opulence, is actually humble. That is why he became Chris, Arjuna's charioteer. Yes, if Krishna wanted to try to be the hero, he could have easily become the hero, right? He would have told the Pandavas, all of you sit at home. Everybody relax. I'm giving you a big... 70 inch TV, you watch the battle from here. I'll go alone with my chakra and all the 11 Akshavhinis, I'll finish within 
five seconds then let us have our lunch together krishna could have easily done that and you know see i did it all no krishna gave the full credit to his devotees and he didn't even pick up the weapon see how renounced krishna is how affectionate krishna is to his devotees krishna loves giving credit and glorification to his own devotees so non enviousness is very important for understanding and appreciating and enjoying the process of krishna consciousness so if some of us are struggling still to enjoy or find this joy in hearing chanting worshiping that means somewhere we are still struggling with this particular anartha or contamination of envy so even though we have developed some faith in bhakti we are still in the process of purifying it and the more we become purified the more that taste will come so no need to be morose but we should be able to diagnose the disease the problem is not in god the problem is in our heart that we are not able to taste the sweetness and enjoy this beautiful process which is simple and enjoyable susukam kartum avyayam the last point the eighth adjective that krishna uses for this ananya bhakti is avyaya inexhaustible Now, this is a very very interesting adjective that the lord puts he says that whatever progress you are making in this process of ananya bhakti because it is of the nature of the soul it is related to the soul proper any advancement in the path of pure devotion is never lost it is avyaya it is ever lasting krishna has already indicated this in the second chapter anybody remembers that verse in the second chapter of bhagavad gita krishna emphasizes the same point that advancement in this path of buddhi yoga or devotional service is never lost anyone so krishna says neha bhikrama nashosti pratyavayo na vidyate svalpam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bhaya neha bhikrama nashosti in this endeavor there is no loss of vyaya vyaya means decrease loss of vyaya svalpam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bhaya even a little advancement on this path can save one from the greatest fate so krishna is restating reemphasizing how because bhakti is not just karma karma means if you simply perform pious activities after some time you will enjoy or suffer the results of that activity that is wiped out but bhakti is not like that because bhakti is spiritual in nature the effects of bhakti and execution of bhakti always remain permanent so raja vidya raja guyam pavitram pure uttamam transcendental spiritual topmost king of knowledge topmost secret pratyakshavagamam directly experience realization dharmyam the very essence or principle of religion susukam kartum so enjoyable to perform and avyayam everlasting these are the characteristics of this topmost knowledge which relates to ananya bhakti this bhakti is so powerful it is said the padma puran it is said that even though one may have so much karma from past lives just like what we said right we may still have envy but if one adopts the process of ananya bhakti even in this conditioned state it is possible 
it is not that one cannot adopt pure bhakti when one is contaminated because one can in his intention be pure one may not yet be fully purified from contamination but if his intention is pure in terms of not desiring anything else other than serving and pleasing the lord then one is still considered a practitioner of uttama bhakti the padma puran says अप्रारब्ध फल पापम कूटम बीज फलोन मुखम क्रमेण प्रलीयते विष्णु भक्ति रतात्मेज इन प्युअर भक्ति टू लॉर्ड विष्णु ऑल देर कर्मा ऑल देर कंटेमिनेशन वेदर इट इज इन इग्नोरेंस फॉर्म इन द सीड फॉर्म इन द फलोन मुख फॉर्म इन द फॉर्म ऑफ जस्ट फ्रक्टिफाइंग कर्मा और ऑलरेडी फ्रक्टिफाइड the sanchita sorry not already fructified or the sanchita karma aprarabdha kutam bijam phalon mukam kramena eva praliyate is gradually destroyed completely so the padma purana is very clear about karma is simply by vishnu bhakti all one's karma no matter at what stage one is can be removed that is why the scriptures especially recommend the chanting of the holy names of the lord so that one can very rapidly make spiritual advancement by chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so by chanting the holy names associating with devotees one can make progress in uttam bhakti very fast see uttam bhakti is not just about understanding the technicalities of the execution the execution of uttam bhakti has a very 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 important component for us to be able to practice it and that extremely important component which allows the jiva to enter ananya bhakti is association of those devotees who are practicing ananya bhakti at least in their intention if not in the state of realization because if it is in the state of realization even better and best for example narad muni's good fortune in his previous life when he was the son of a maid servant He was so fortunate that he got the association. Narayanuni explains this in the Bhagavat. That I got this association of this Bhakti Vedanta, and I became so fortunate that I got the concept of Ananya Bhakti, and I got the seed of Ananya Bhakti in my heart. Uchchista lepan anumodita dvijayi sakrad sma bhuje tad apast kilvishaha. एवं प्रवृत्त विशुद्ध चेतस तद्धर्म एवात्म ची प्रजायते आई स्टार्टेड एंजॉइंग एंड लविंग दिस पाथ ऑफ प्योर भक्ति व्हेन वंस विद द परमिशन ऑफ दिस प्योर डिवोटीज आई एट सम ऑफ द रेमनेंट्स सक्रिद मींस वंस ओनली भुंजे तद अपाष्ट किलबिशह आई एट एंड बिकम प्यूरिफाइड ऑल माय कंटामिनेशन विशुद्ध चेतस and i became purified in my heart and i got through that association of those great sages i got the taste in bhakti in ananya bhakti i started enjoying the practice of bhakti rather than the typical mentality of doing bhakti to get something else i started enjoying the very process of bhakti this is the essential characteristic of ananya bhakti which is different from other bhaktis अदर भक्ति विच इज गुणमयी भक्ति गुणमयी भक्ति इन इग्नोरेंस भक्ति इन रजोगुण भक्ति इन सत्तगुण व्हाट वी बीन डिस्कसिंग इन भागवतम हैज अ मोटिवेशन अदर देन एक्सक्लूसिव प्लेजर ऑफ द लॉर्ड दैट्स व्हेन द भागवतम इन द फिफ्थ चैप्टर ऑफ द फर्स्ट कैंटो नारद मुनि सेज तत्रान्वहम कृष्ण कथा प्रगायताम 
अनुग्रहेना श्रृणवन मनोहरा श्रद्धया मे अनुपादम विशृणवत क्रियाश्रवस्यांग ममाभवदुचि आई डेवलप रुचि आई डेवलप टेस्ट फॉर हियरिंग एंड चैंटिंग द ग्लोरीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड आई डेवलप दिस डिजायर टू डू दिस अन्य भक्ति इन द एसोसिएशन ऑफ दीज प्योर डिवोटीज so that is very important and that is why this is such a great secret because nobody is able to appreciate this point about ananya bhakti no matter how much one reads and speculates and tries to understand through jnana but without receiving the association and blessings of those who already have this blessing the secret is not opened when is not given entry into that realm that one can actually start experiencing this bliss of ananya bhakti one is not even able to appreciate it and then krishna mentions in 9.3 is glorifying this dharma because the first three verses actually of the ninth chapter are actually more or less an introduction of what krishna is going to speak in the ninth chapter so krishna glorifies that knowledge with eight adjectives and in the ninth in the third verse of the ninth chapter he says what will happen if somebody doesn't have faith in the knowledge that i'm giving now the topmost knowledge if because of envy one doesn't have faith what happens ashraddhana purusha dharmasya asya parantap aprapya mam nivartante mrityu samsara vartmani those who are not faithful in this devotional service they cannot attain me and that is why they return to the path of birth and death in this material world nivartante mrutyu samsara vartmani अप्राप्यमाम बिकॉज दे डोंट अटेन मी अप्राप्यमाम निवर्तन दे कम बैक विदाउट अनन्य भक्ति यू कैनॉट अटेन मी अटेन मी मीनिंग कृष्ण इज टॉकिंग अबाउट अटेनिंग दिस डायरेक्ट एसोसिएशन इन वैकुंठ और अल्टीमेटली इन गोलोक वृंदावन दे अगेन कम बैक इन दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड सो कृष्ण इज एम्फोसाइजिंग द इम्पोर्टेंस of pure devotional service okay so i'm going to stop here there is actually so much to discuss but i would recommend you read the purports a lot of beautiful information in the purports so this verse is emphasizing that this shraddha is very important this faith in this process is very important because spiritual life is not a 100 meter sprint It's like a marathon. One has to steadily practice in a disciplined manner for decades, practically the whole life. It's not that one just becomes enthusiastic, does it for a few days, and then one gets the fruit, and one then carries on with doing something else. No. So that faith is very important. What kind of faith? That faith in pure bhakti. That if I simply execute pure bhakti. then i don't have to bother about any other process this ananya bhakti is so topmost is so so much the very root of the spiritual process the topmost process that having executed this automatically all other aspects are taken care of like the bhagavatam says yatha taror mool nishechane na tripyanti tat skanda bhujop shakah प्राणोपहारा 
the devatas become satisfied the living entities become satisfied all the planets become satisfied one doesn't need to endeavor to do other things separately this is the power of ananya so that is the very beauty of ananya bhakti so krishna is emphasizing have faith in this knowledge that i am giving you this topmost knowledge to be steady when develops one needs to develop faith and that faith comes like what narad muni explained in the previous verse comes through the association of those who have faith and as one's heart gets purified and one starts getting the beautiful experience of pure devotion gradually one's faith becomes stronger and stronger and stronger in the process of pure devotion from anishtita bhakti one comes to nishtita bhakti firm faith and then eventually one develops into a first class devotee who has 100% conviction by realization pratyaksha avagamam dharmyam so all one needs to do is remain in the association of sincere pure devotees and execute the process of bhakti but if somebody is so unfortunate that even krishna's words they don't have faith and krishna is saying please trust me i am god i know this is topmost just stick to this if you do this this is all that is needed but we try to be over smart krishna's opinion is like this but i think my grandmother told me my grandfather told me in my community they said like this so if we give more credit to others opinions rather than krishna's opinion ashuddha dhanaha dharmasya asya parampara so do not have faith in my words of this topmost principle of religion aprapya mam nivartante mrutyu samsara vartam they come back into this material world because they are unable to attain me because you cannot attain me unless you come to this standard of your devotional service okay so having said that i stop here so we have only covered three verses 9.1 9.2 9.3 which are essentially actually an introduction to this chapter where krishna glorifies what he is going to describe so this is appetizer okay. so summarily what krishna has said to understand this knowledge one has to be non envious point number 1 because this ananya bhakti this this topic is top secret top knowledge and if you want to understand it and practice it you must be non envious and those who do not have faith in this knowledge it is going to be very difficult for them to reach the topmost pinnacle of spiritual realization which is to develop a personal relationship because that is the ultimate potential of the living entity the ultimate potential of the living entity is not just the realization that i am not this body and soul that is the very first step on the path of spiritual realization that's why krishna said there is guhya guhya tara and guhya tama guhya means to understand नैनम चिन्नन्ते शस्त्राणि नैनम दहति पावक न चैनम क्लेदेन्ते आपो न शुष्यति मारुतः अजो नित्यो शाश्वतो यम पुराणो न हन्यते हन्यमाने शरीरे आई विल नेवर बी किल्ड इवन इफ द बॉडी इज किल्ड आई एम अज अनबोर्न नित्य इटर्नल दैट इज ओनली फर्स्ट स्टेप दैट इज द स्टेप ऑफ जस्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग आई एम नॉट बॉडी आई एम सोल देन वन हैज टू अंडरस्टैंड ओ वेयर डिड दिस सोल कम फ्रॉम that is guhya tara more deeper secret to understand there is the supreme and i am part and parcel of the supreme but higher than that the last word in spiritual realization is to understand now that i am part of the supreme what is my specific relationship with the supreme absolute truth what is my swa rupa my personal form my personal nature for that one has to come to the point of ananya bhakti and if one doesn't come there because of envy and lack of faith one will unable 
to come to that complete realization of the potential of the soul. That is what Krishna is saying. Thank you very much. So I'm opening the floor for any comments or questions. Wonderful. So that's good. So uh, we'll continue next week and we will get into the second part of the discussion where Krishna explains some Aishwarya Gyan about his opulences. Here again, he has explained a bit in the seventh chapter, but here he goes a bit more detail uh, into this. Yeah. So as practitioners of devotees, these are a few points which we must be very... If we forget all the technicalities it's still okay, but these few points we must be very careful to remember. The importance of Ananya Bhakti and the importance of practicing the limbs of Bhakti in the association of pure devotees or at least those who are aspiring for pure devotion. That is very, very important. Yes, thank you very much. Anusha Ji, thank you. Uh, all those who joined, I see Mahadevanji connected. Thank you. Thank you, Bravo. Yes. Yeah. So all those who have joined, thank you very much. Murugan, nice to see you Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.